Hello, I'm Paul Peterson. I'm the Editor-in-Chief at Education Next, and I would like to share the results of a report that we have just issued. Uh, it is a report on achievement growth across nations and across uh, U.S. states. And as you can see, the report's on the screen. Uh, today I have with me one of the co-authors of the report, uh, Eric Kanyashek, who with Lidger Wisman and myself uh, put together data on U.S. progress over the last 14 years from 1995 to 2009 as compared to other countries. And what we found basically was that the United States gains in student achievement over this period have been middling. We rank number 25 of 49 states, far behind Latvia, Chile, and Brazil, which have had remarkable gains, and the gains in Germany and the United Kingdom have also very much outstripped ours. And to me, this is a pretty surprising finding because, uh, Rick, hasn't it been the case that we have said that we're working really hard at this. Well, absolutely. We started right after Sputnik was launched, saying we had to do better in math and science. And we've had periodic refreshers of determination to do better. Perhaps the best one for this report is the meeting in 1989 of the governors of all the states. And they proclaimed that by the year 2000, the U.S. would be first in the world in math and science, which, as your data in our previous report show, is far from the case. Well, some states are doing better than other states, are they not? Well, there are some states that are, that are doing competitively internationally and are growing uh, at roughly the rates of the fastest growing. But they're balanced against states that are doing terribly. And so we're uh, left... Be, being in the middle of all the international uh, countries. So do we know what's causing the United States to uh, fall back into the middle of the pack? What, isn't it just the, the weakest countries, the Latin American countries that are making so much progress and, and that it's not really uh, that big a deal? No, I mean, the countries that are growing uh, in terms of achievement around the world are not just the ones that are starting far behind. There are some that are far, starting far behind, but there are others that are starting farther ahead. And I guess we find just very, very little connection between where you started and where you are in terms of growth. Yeah, I would say Anybody can grow. You can be top of, the, yeah. top of the ladder and you can still grow as Germany is doing, and you can be I, down the list and still grow. Exactly, or you could be Sweden that's right at the bottom, which, at one time looked like they were doing much better. So what do we need to do about this? Well, I th think that each country has its own recipe of how to do it. Uh, there have been a lot of proposals that have made that you and I have participated in of how to change things. But the one thing that's really clear is change is really important to the U.S. Uh, doing well on these tests is not a matter we should be indifferent to it makes a big difference to have a highly skilled labor force and it makes a big difference for our future GDP. Can you quantify that? Is there a way that you can say, okay, if we can only do as well as the Germans say, uh, how, much, uh, how much would it do for our economy? Well, if we could be as good as the Germans, uh, one of our co-authors, Ludger Wussmann from Germany, if we could be as good as the Germans, we would grow significantly faster over the next decades, and the present value, the, the value in terms of today's dollars, would be about three times the size of our current gross domestic product. So we can't take this lightly. Why is this not a central political issue in the campaign? Why is it that we don't have political leaders who say we've got to fix our schools? I think there are a lot of people that are happy with the schools as they are today particularly a lot of people that are involved in the schools, and they don't want much change. So the forces for keeping the status quo are well organized, and those who want change are just sort of ordinary folks. Well, it's more than that. It's, this is an intergenerational issue. The, the adults of today are not going to be the ones that necessarily benefit from the future 
uh, economic growth of the economy. It's the youth of today that aren't very well represented in our decision making. Well, let's talk about this some more. So uh, when we get together next, I want to push on this a bit more. So <laughs> good talking with you today. Thanks.